So this past week, we've got something interesting to look at. Um, the Consumer Electronics Show. Yeah, there was, some, there was some stuff there. So we're going to have our regular news story tonight. And also, we're going to have a look at some of the things that came out of the Consumer Electronics Show. Because if you want to just... The, the reason it qualifies as what the fuck is that someone somewhere dumped tons of money so much money into these devices to bring them to market and thought it was a good idea so we'll look at some thought of those that, thought that you need them yeah we'll, we'll we'll be looking at a few of those choice selections shall we say um but of course we also have that just because we have one thing doesn't mean we don't have the other and as always, the world is full of stupid. So, it's time for the intro. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here. A little segment we like to call, What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And, oh boy. Oh boy. Um, and suddenly my mic just got way louder for... I, no idea why. Regardless, we continue on. Um, so, <laughs> uh, yeah, I got very loud, and I don't know why. My mic level just shot up. Why? Fucking Windows 10 is doing a thing, and I don't know why. Stop doing a thing. Why was I, mean, I suddenly maybe so... Maybe the problem is you're using Windows? Eh, no, it's not that. And now we're totally now, just get a Mac. And now it's normal again. No, it's not that. It's not that. It's that I'm using a ton of different programs cobbled together that were never intended to do any of this shit. <laughs> and yet I do it anyway. That could be it too. I'm using Winamp. I'm using uh, Wirecast. I'm using Skype. I'm using IRC. I'm using Chrome. I'm using a uh, soundboard and audio setup. I'm using three different sound cards. This was never meant to be this. And yet, yeah. I stitched it together like a Frankenstein abomination and called it a show. Anyway. And it's a lie. Anyway, let's look, look at our news. For this Don't week. be a Mac troll. Oh, you weren't here last week, honey. So we we always have these people who, and amazing, and this I find this amazing in the age of Trump, People who are ashamed of what they've done. I know, it's stunning that shame still exists. Or I shouldn't... I mean, give it like six months. Well, maybe not so much ashamed as they don't want other people to know they did it. And the first for person in our first story has a, an interesting technique for attempting to remove... His stain, not that kind of stain, that's a later story. Um, <laughs> the stigma, the social stigma. Um, no, don't do that. New York bank executive's mugshot goes viral after he buys hundreds of copies of his local newspaper in unsuccessful bid to hide his drunk driving arrest. Bank executive who was charged with drunk driving in upstate New York bought hundreds of copies of his local newspaper in a failed bid to hide his arrest. Bank Pres Vice President Joseph Talbert, 43, of Newark, was arrested last week in Wayne County and charged with driving while intoxicated. Police say they had seen his car swerving on Route 31 around 10 p.m. Thursday, after which Talbot failed sobriety tests. Talbot is also accused of refusing to be fingerprinted and photographed, telling officers he didn't want his mugshot to appear in the paper. But officials took his photo regardless, and the Times of Wayne County read it on Saturday, along with the story, and also published it on the website. Several newsstands called the paper Saturday morning, saying a man identified as Talbot had bought all of the copies. <laughs> the paper's editor, Ron Holdricker, said... Talbot bought almost 1,000 copies, and they're $1.25 each. <clears throat> he 
He bought all of the copies uh, Times of Wayne County at several newsstands in an apparent effort to keep his mugshot from circulating. Um, newsstands were later restocked. Talbot's story ended up making national headlines. Okay. Good job. And just in case you were wondering, ladies and gentlemen, Joseph Talbot, everyone. That's, that's the man who was arrested for drunk driving who tried to stop this from getting out by buying up all of the physical newspapers of a paper that has a web presence. Yeah, like 50 years ago, that would have worked. Hell, 20 years ago, that would have worked. But now, even your shitty little local newspaper has a website. They, they're going to find out. Well, even if they didn't have a website, they got restocked. Is the thing. Yeah. They just called the paper and said, hey, we're all out. Can you bring some more? Okay, we're selling a lot of papers today. Oh, yeah, we're what? selling. We're completely sold out. All right, we'll bring you some more to sell. Yeah. And of Boy, course, your feature on the VFW Hall really took off, Bob. <laughs> and of course, because he did this and made what was already a pretty messed up situation even weirder, that is, oh, that is catnip to a whole segment of journalists. Yeah. Some, but now it's getting double the coverage because the thing happened. You, This isn't just local now. There's people in Vietnam laughing at your ass. There's people in New Jersey and Illinois laughing at your ass. Yeah, that's true. This, this Someone who, whose name I can't pronounce in some far off corner of the globe is open to paper and is going, look at this asshole. <laughs> And now, everyone who is watching this show, Joseph Talbot, he was stopped for drunk driving. Everyone. If you see him, tell him it didn't work. It did not fucking work. Your plan was a bad plan. You have failed. Your plan was a failure. Congratulations, you failed. Daddy, that's not even how you play with that, baby. Speaking of congratulations, you failed. Um... Why are bank robbers just shit at what they do? Um, because if they were good at things, they wouldn't be robbing banks. I cannot argue with that. That is that. Yeah, that makes perfect. Yep. There you go. So it comes to us from San Diego and, um, there are a couple rules for robbing a bank. Uh, number one, have a exit strategy. Um, number two, understand case the layout, know what's going on. Number three, conceal your identity. Yeah. Man who swiped debit card during bank robbery no. sentenced to four years. He did not. <laughs> a man who was tracked down after he swiped his debit card at a Marina area bank branch before robbing it was sentenced Tuesday to nearly four years in prison. Uh, Alvin Lee Neal entered the bank at 10.30 a.m. on May 13th dressed in a black and white checkered coat walked to the teller's desk and swiped his Wells Fargo debit card through a customer card reader, causing his account profile to appear on the clerk's computer screen. That's why you do that. In plea agreement, Neil conceded. He proceeded to tell the employee, you're being robbed. Don't make a mistake. Qu that's a quote. That is... I mean, that's good advice. That perhaps you should have taken? I Did he rob his own bank? He robbed the bank he used. Yes, he had a Wells Fargo account. And he went and robbed a Wells Fargo bank. Fair, did he know he had a Wells Fargo account? Well, he swiped a Wells Fargo debit card. Yeah, true. But you don't rob your own bank. That costs you money. <laughs> They have your money. If you want your own money, you just tell them. You don't They'll have to rob. You. They have to give you your own money. 
if what you want is your own money, they have to give it to you. If you rob them, it's, that's going to cost you money. How do you not understand that this is... If you Also, when you swipe the card, they know who you are. That's why you swipe the card. Yes! So that all your information comes up and they don't have to ask you but, your account number. Let me ask you this one. Do you know your account number off the top of your head? Nobody knows their fucking account Nobody number. Nobody knows their fucking account. That's why you bring your fucking card. You swipe the card, you type in your PIN number. That's four fucking digits. You remember I that. There's once a fucking day can't tell me their own zip code. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you ask for demographic purposes. Like they want to know where their shoppers are coming from. What's yeah. their zip code? Uh, really? Should you have your address pinned to your coat? I can understand that if you just move or something. But oh. if you if you live in a place... Or I'm also a big fan of the people that are like, oh, I don't give out that information. And I'm like, you know that like a couple of thousand people have the same zip code as you, right? <laughs> like, I ain't asking for your social security number. Oh. It tells me nothing about you except that you live in a town. That's that's how they look at the debit card. They, it just poop your account. It's got your name and your address. That's, that's and what that's for. You know, all that info you gave them when you opened your account? They've got that. It doesn't just go away. No. Well, this next one is... Have you ever been in a situation where things start going catastrophically wrong, but you can't bring yourself to stop? You have to see things through to completion. I mean, I, I, I dated before I was married again, so yes. <sighs> this is one of those, this is definitely one of those... Well, might as well finish up. <laughs> At this point. Um, man accused of burglarizing Townsend Pizza Store in the Buff. Oh. Townsend, Maryland. Authorities have arrested a man they say burglarized a Townsend Pizza Shop in the nude earlier this month. Baltimore County Police said in a statement that 23-year-old Jonathan K. Newman been charged with second-degree burglary following the November 10th break-in into Slice Pizza. Police say Newman's pants ripped off as he entered the store from a roof vent. I mean, it is called Slice Pizza. Video footage shows the suspect then took off his shirt to cover his face. You didn't think of that before he broke in? Oh, to make it even better... After they have him on camera, video footage, store owner Yanni Rezus uh, says there was no money in the cash register, but the suspect still caused thousands of dollars in damage to the store. Usually after a place is closed, they lock up the tills. Like, yeah, they don't leave money in the register. Yeah, it doesn't live in the register. They no. have they either put it in a safe or the, they put it in one of those zipper bags. So the drawer comes out and it gets locked up usually. Yeah, or, or they put it in one of those zipper bags and they walk yep. that shit down to the bank. Yep. They didn't. So you broke into a place, got caught on video, naked, tried didn't get anything. Didn't get nothing. And tried to try to mitigate the circumstance by, well, they can see my penis anyway. So you tried to cover you. I, I would love to see the line out for that motherfucker. I feel like if I feel like if I had seen Chris Pratt do this on Parks and Recreation, <laughs> it would have seemed fitting. Yeah, it does. You know, you could you could see Andy. Like I can see Andy doing this. You could see Andy pulling that shit. Yeah. You you but that doesn't work in the real world. No. In the real world, Andy is a horribly, horribly dysfunctional human being. Yeah. Andy is the sort of person who would be in jail several times over for doing very stupid things. Don't be Andy. It doesn't work. TV is make-believe. It doesn't work for real. I mean, to be fair, he opened the series getting dumped by Rashida Jones. Yeah. 
So, you know, but, he went through some hard times. He lived in a ditch. Yeah, but he was still fine. And he constantly... And he did successfully live in a ditch. He was constantly impersonating an FBI agent. And nobody ever had a problem with that shit. Yeah, that would definitely... That gets you. We've seen out. stories where people do that shit. They go to jail. Well, no, people don't. People don't go. Oh, that scamp at it again. Speaking of not ending well, fuck me. Um, especially this past November, we have all had reason to argue with members of our families. Yeah. We have had and avoiding it so hard. All across America there there were blow-ups big and small through Thanksgiving, through Christmas, through the entire holiday season. Everybody had issues with members of their family, either either in person or on Facebook or And you know what? I could honestly say politics is a good reason. And and there are other good reasons to have issues with your family. There are good reasons. If you're on this show, however, you, you don't have a good reason. Man barricades himself in house after family members take a bite of his grilled cheese sandwich. Oh no, that's a good reason. <laughs> See, Dan knows. Don't fuck with my grilled cheese. That's a good reason. Maryland man has been arrested following an hours-long standoff with law enforcement that police say began when a family member took a bite from his grilled cheese sandwich. How did it end up a like a standoff with the cops? Baltimore County Police spokesman Sean Vincent says the dispute began about 5 p.m. Sunday at a Dundalk home. The man was eating with his wife and daughter, became angry when one of them took a bite from his sa sandwich, prompting him to fire a shot inside no. the house. No, 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 no. Wife and daughter were able to leave the house safely. The man barricaded himself inside. He surrendered to police shortly before 9 p.m. No one was injured. Police took the man to hospital for evaluation. Vincent says the man will face charges. You can always get another grilled cheese sandwich. Yes! You know what's harder to get another of? A wife and daughter they, for uh, not being out of jail. I, they, like, this is not a good reason to bust out your firearm. It's not. You know, I had I had a roommate long, long ago, back in just, just early days when I was living in Savannah. He punched a hole in the apartment wall because I drank the last of the milk. You feel? Punched a fucking hole in the... And I, I want to point out, he had no idea what was behind that wall. He could have punched straight into some sort of electrical cables. Men dig punching walls, man. That's like... I, I have known so many dudes who, like, that is how they vent their frustration. I'm a big fan of throwing things. I don't... Like, I knew a dude who broke three fingers on his hand punching a wall. And I'm like... That's why you throw things. You punish the thing, not yourself. <laughs> I get mad. I throw shit. And because then, if something breaks, it's not me. I, I st it's it's a what's Dude, a, it's like punching walls, man. What does a grilled cheese sandwich cost? It's it's a couple slices of bread. It's some cheese. It's butter in the pan to grill it up. How much does that run? Like five bucks at yeah. most. You go get a new loaf of bread, you go get a new uh, pack of Velveeta, you get yourself some some butter or a can you, you, you cannot believe it's butter if you want. That's that's an option. Do you want to be fancy? You don't have to believe it's butter. Yeah, but you five dollars for a new sandwich, just turn on the stove. I can make a grilled cheese sandwich and I'm an idiot. <laughs> you don't get a gun. You There's no reason to pull a, like, the only good reason I can think of to pull a gun on your own child is if they have become a zombie. Yes, that is an excellent reason. And you know why it's an excellent reason? Because it is never in the history of the world happened. Right. But if 
your child shambles into your room with rotting flesh hanging off of them, making a gurgling sound and trying to gnaw on you, that's a good reason to pull a gun on your child. Can you just imagine? Pretty much other than that, there isn't one. Can you just imagine the poor negotiator on the, for the police side trying to go, we're doing what? What what happened? What, what is he? What? 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 Give me something to work with here. Jesus Christ. What do I do? Am I going to offer him a new fucking sandwich to come out? Really? I mean, at that point, would a new sandwich even do any Gouda? <laughs> he was just... He was just exercising his rights as an American. <laughs> God damn it. I mean, them taking a bite out of his fam sandwich might have made him feel like mess of a, less of a Romano. That was a stretch. That, that one was a stretch, I know. I can't name that many cheeses off the top of my head, actually. Ah, anyway, another one of those, the cops are probably baffled by this one. And, you know, I've got to admire this woman. She saw this shit through, even though it was an incredibly bad idea. Beer drinking woman launches SUV into river keeps drinking oh okay when the woman parked at a york haven boat launch spotted police she accelerated into the susquehanna river police pulled into a york haven boat launch monday behind a woman looking to arrest her for fleeing from them before they could she gunned the engine barreling into the river acceleration from the black 2011 subaru outback propelled the SUV about 20 feet offshore. When officers tried to talk with the woman, she ignored them. Uh, Officer Farron says she stayed in the car and continued to drink her beer. Officers called the fire department and a boat was used to get the woman and bring her back to shore. And at that point, you're getting arrested. You might as well finish your fucking I, Yeah, you know what? It's like, well... Man, we need you to come in. You know what? You're going to bring me to jail. <laughs> in my goddamn schlitz. Yeah, exactly. I mean, at that point, it's like, what the fuck else can you do? You're not going to get into worse trouble for half a beer than you are for all of the beer. May as well shotgun it. I, yeah, it's like, <laughs> I, I've got to respect. You're going to spend the night in jail. You might as well be drunk. <laughs> I would have been, if I was the cop in that situation, I'd have been like, yeah, just let her do it. Just, just we'll get the boat. Let her finish the beer. Let her fucking be. I'm not, I'm not getting wet for this. Oh, Rodin Channel says she didn't want her beer to be watered down. That's also a consideration. Fair point. I mean, was, was she like trying to get rid of the evidence? <laughs> you just drove your car into a river. Yeah. That's kind of evidence. Even if you were sober, that would get some attention. <laughs> like, even if you did that without an ounce of alcohol in you, you'd probably be going to jail. Uh, could you guys play any louder? I'm just wondering. <laughs> oh, we could. <laughs> Good job, Peggy. As if on cue. Uh, yeah, all right, now it's time to look at stuff from the Consumer Electronics Show. And you're going to have to mute this next one because it's got autoplay. <sighs> you know what? I'm. Are we done with people trying to market to millennials yet? Because no. this shit just keeps getting... Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> it's a Peggy in a box. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Oh, God, how are you going to get out? <laughs> what are you going to do? The cat has no idea what the fuck just happened. You were in there, and now you're in here? So you're going to beat me up? That's your solution? <laughs> yep, you're that's gonna, a cat, all right. another chunk out of my knuckles? Did you know that sometimes you could not scratch my hands <laughs> <with it? laughs> Like, just for fun, maybe we could try that? 
Yeah. <laughs> so there we go. We have, we, we have a Peggy in the box. Oh, and now Dottie's like, what the fuck is that box doing up there? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it's a good idea, Dottie. <laughs> oh. If you jump, you're not going to make it, and that whole box is going to topple over with your sister in it. It'll make for good video, so go for it. Go for it, kitty. Oh, we're going to do it the smart way. You want to jump in that box? <laughs> oh, this is about to go poorly. Oh. No, Dottie's the brains of the operation. She considers all her actions very carefully. Unlike her sister, who just, you know, does things. Anyway. So marketing to millennials. When is this has got this marketing to millennials shit has got to stop eventually. Hopefully. Because it just it's dragging down our collective IQ to such such great lows. Such great lows. Let's start with um Chrysler. Marketing cars for millennials. The selfie taking concept car. What? Chrysler unveiled its portal concept car at the Consumer Electronics Show. It's a long list of features based on 20 years of research into exactly what millennials want from a car. Okay, so, selfies, selfies haven't even existed for 20 years. Um, nor have millennials. The car can take a photo of everyone riding in all six seats. Stop that. Stop that. Um, the car lets everyone uh, in the car share songs and videos to create a single playlist. Uh, the car stereo has, quote, zoned audio that lets each pastor listen to different things using headphones. Same technology can amplify specific external sounds for the driver, such as the siren or the sound of an approaching ambulance. So what they're saying is you don't talk to each other. You just plug oh. into your little headphone thingies and ignore the entire world. And we want to make sure you don't miss a fucking siren. So we're going to amplify noises because you're stupid millennials. Plus, we'll let you take your stupid pictures of each other by our shit. That's so dumb. A, sh so dumb. a shared display screen in the van ceiling allows occupants to put together a combined playlist. They put a screen in the ceiling. It Was it not enough to put a fucking TV in the car? Was that not distracting enough for everybody? Um, you can shake can the use for the personal audio. If you have like three kids that are all at that age where they fucking hate each other, that would come in really handy. Oh, oh, even better. Um, you can also order dinner from the screen in the car and pay for it. So yeah, that I'm sure that's secure. And interior LED lighting that you can change the colors of. So everybody can now be one of the douchebag guidos with a Cam Camaro with a light show under it. Or in it. Ugh. And you know what? If I, I swear to God, someone is going to figure out a way to hack this damn thing. Someone's going to yell at me for saying Guido. I know it. Someone's going to figure out a way to hack this thing and have like turned the fucking inside of the car into a rave. And you can't stop it. Because that's you connect it all to the internet. That's a lot of stimuli to have going on while you're trying to operate two tons of of, I would say, steel, but they're mostly fiberglass now. That's way too much stimuli to have going on oh. when you're trying to operate a vehicle. And and I was just mentioning That's shit. That's the fucking tunnel from Willy Wonka. Rid Hi. Hi. Ridiculous Hi. shit getting connected to the internet. This made the national news because Lorelei has created a smart hairbrush that listens to hair. I don't think my hair says anything. Beauty giant Lorelai has launched a smart internet connected hairbrush that analyzes users' hair type and recommends products accordingly. 
I don't need my hairbrush to sell me shit. The brush will send information via Wi-Fi or Bluetooth to a mobile app, which will take into account humidity, temperature, and wind, and will produce a quality score, ranking hair for damage, breakage, tangling, and dryness. It will then provide hair tips and recommend Lorelei's Keratase, uh, uh, Keratase products. Fuck you. Your hairbrush will judge you. They have a mirror that'll do this now, too. I just saw an ad in Cosmo. There's a high-tech mirror that when you look in it, it takes a picture and brings up on, the, screen, okay. on, on the mirror all, like, your skin concerns. L'Oreal. I'm saying it wrong, apparently. So, I because I need the mirror to tell me everything that's wrong with me. That's what I need in my fucking life. Your, oh, my. Okay. Your hairbrush... L'Oreal. Well, fuck it. Like, I would fuck yeah, it. L'Oreal. This is a company that... L'Oreal. They're one of the biggest companies in the world. Because I don't... You Do you know what, what, my, what I use for shampoo? They probably own it. I use the generic shit that I get at the grocery store. The store brand crap. Mm, they probably still make it. L'Oreal owns probably a third of the cosmetics and personal care product brands on the market. All right, fine. Name three different computer processor companies. There you go. You have your sphere of knowledge. I have but, my sphere of knowledge. Yeah, but computer processor companies don't advertise during literally every show on television. What shows do you watch? You see, you, 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 you watch TV, you don't see a shampoo ad. You watch TV, you don't hear dong, dong, ding, ding, ding. Or that, you probably hear that a lot. I hear a lot of that. Finally, from the, the uh, wonderful Internet of Shit, which is a Twitter account you should follow. He, he or she, I, I'm not sure which, but very smart individual, actually went to the CES and provided us with other yeah. less publicly noticed products. Yeah, I went through his Google moments of the event and man, there was some dumb shit there. For example, high-tech boxer briefs protecting your health from Wi-Fi and cell phone radiation. They make radiation proof underwear. And they're called Spartans. To protect you from the radiation in your cell phone. Because everybody rubs that on their dick, right? <laughs> I mean, if I had a nickel for every time I caught Dan rubbing his cell phone on his dick. Um, we have, let's see, what's some of the other more priceless ones? Don't come and do that on camera. <laughs> um, the, this one, I, I cannot for the life of me. The Microbot Push. The wireless yeah. robotic button pusher. In case you wondered, had we reached, reached peak fucking lazy? The wireless. They didn't, even, they didn't even have this in Wall-E. The fat bubble-like humans in Wall-E who didn't walk anywhere and had all lived in little hover chairs with a TV and a snack bowl, they didn't even have this. That's how bad. Let's see what what else is on our wonderful list here. Um Oh, the welt. Yeah, this thing you won't look like a complete imbecile wearing the world's first smart belt to mallet to manage calorie balance because your belt should judge you too just everything you use all day should judge you uh mosquito killing robot yeah that one looks that looks like a great yeah that looks like it'll come alive and kill you yes it's got a laser it's got a fucking laser Connected shoes? Why? Why? This this sign just confused just kind of scared me. Bone conduction headphones. I guess I see the idea of that. Cause you know, like if you scratch the, the test for this is if you scratch a pencil and then you put it between your teeth and scratch it, the sound is much louder because sound is conducted through your jawbone. Yes, but also creepy. Yeah, like I see the point because you can conduct sound waves along your bones, but 
but creepy. You really have a pretty decent way to deliver sound to your ears. We also have the eSkin Smart Apparel, which is for virtual reality. As you can see here, it doesn't work for shit. <laughs> In a live demonstration, yeah, it's supposed to track your body motions in virtual reality. So when you duck down, however, the little figure guy there, he's not ducking down. So that, that's really good to show off at CES. Why is there a litter box that texts you when your cat poops? Like, we have a pretty fucking high-tech litter box. We have a $400 litter box that doesn't use litter. It uses little plastic pellets and we hook it up. We have it hooked up to the washer line and it scoops and then it literally washes and sanitizes the pellets. So we don't scoop litter. We don't change litter, any of that. That's pretty fucking high tech. It doesn't text us when the cats poop because I don't see why I would need that information. We have the new sports bottle age, the, the, Moikit Jean, I, I guess it's what it's called. It's a smart water bottle that tracks your daily hydration. Huh. More products to judge you. The Zeke Smart Pillow streams music, stops snoring, analyzes sleep. And I'm perfectly, I'm sure that information won't ever be sold to another company with your yeah. personalized info. This weird having a fucking computer, have a company think, watching you when you sleep. Think of the day when the hackers can find out when you are in your deepest sleep. Yeah. Um. Let's see here. What else do we have? How does it stop snoring? I don't know. Uh. What else is on this? Oh. Uh. There's, there's also, oh, oh, this one is just really fucking really the grill cleaning robot. <laughs> fucking really. Video toothbrush and app. Does it take pictures inside your mouth? God Ew. only knows. Oh, that mirror thing is on here. Yeah, the, the mirror. Yeah, the, the the smart mirror. High mirror, beauty tech, skin analysis, daily tracking. Your mirror will judge you. Because that's what I need in my life. I don't already go through my day with a crippling sense of incredible <sighs> self-consciousness about my appearance. So the main thing to learn here, of course, is that... Um, Lots of companies spent lots of money on that shit. We're moving towards a point in our society where we will not be able to own something that is not connected to Wi-Fi. Yeah. I where every single thing we own will be a Wi-Fi device. We are hurtling ever faster toward the end of privacy. I had a tiny little realization today that within at least 10 years, kids will be going out summertime. They'll hear, do, 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 and they'll go outside and there, there'll be the ice cream truck and no one will be driving it. And they won't have to ask mom for money because they'll just scan their phone. In and, fact, they'll probably order their ice cream before the truck even gets there. Yeah. It's getting weird out there. We learned this week that if you're already going to jail, finish your beer. Why not? Finish your damn beer. Fuck it. Half a beer gets you as much jail as a full beer. It's true. We've learned that, god damn, make a new sandwich. Put down the gun. Make a new sandwich. Yeah. It's just a fucking sandwich. <laughs> I mean, God's sakes. We've learned that. Can you not get back in? Oh dear. We've learned that if you're in the middle of committing a crime and you happen to lose your pants, maybe that's a sign saying you should stop. Oh. <laughs> Good job, cat. Maybe put on some pants before committing any more crimes today. 
to paraphrase the great Janine Garofalo. We've learned if you're going to rob a bank, probably shouldn't hand them all of your personal information on the way out the door. Also, don't rob your own. Don't rob your own bank. And you're finally, stealing your own money. And finally, and this is true of everything on the internet and in real life, the fastest way to get someone to do something is to tell them not to fucking do it. Don't take my picture. Don't put it in the paper. Yeah. Stuff. You ever put something online and say, don't look this up. You'll be very disgusted. Like, yeah. right, I'm going to do it right now. Don't look up videos of bot flies. Don't oh. do it. I'm telling you not to do it. I mean that in all sincerity. You will be disgust disgusted and repulsed. Do not do this thing for your own good. One of my old office jobs, uh, my working there was very educational for the, it was me and two dudes in my department. And my working there was very educational for them. I taught them about a lot of terrible things. And one of the guys there, because I would say things they didn't understand, would just was just in the habit of Googling things I said. And there was one day I said something about furries. And one of them said, what's a furry? And I started to explain and then went, wait, don't Google that. Too late. And that's how my coworkers learned about furries. And we got a visit from the IT guy. <laughs> right now, there's someone right furiously going, I'm going to go. I'll look up bot flies. Fuck you. No, you don't want to. It's bad. And they'll do it anyway, because humans. Yeah. And they'll yell at you about it on Twitter. Oh, yeah. 